Ever thought a friendly chat over coffee was a secret code for I fancy you? Well, you're not alone. Picture this. Jack, ever the optimist, reads into every smile and how's your day as a covert flirtation. At his local cafe, a casual, nice weather, isn't it, from Sarah, the barista, sends him spiraling into daydreams of romantic picnics. Little does he know, Sarah shares this sunny sentiment with every customer, rain or shine. So, how do we tell the difference? Stay tuned as we decode the subtle art of micro-flirting. What exactly is micro-flirting? It's not as tiny as it sounds. Imagine this. It's the wink across a crowded room, the slight touch as someone hands you a coffee, or that playful nudge during a conversation. Micro-flirting consists of those small, often subconscious gestures that hint at interest without the boldness of direct flirting. These signals are nuanced, gentle, and can easily be mistaken for mere friendliness. Now that we know what micro-flirting is, let's dive into the subtle signals. Actions speak louder than words, especially in the world of micro-flirting. When diving into the subtle art of micro-flirting, understanding nonverbal cues is key. These are the silent signals that often speak volumes about a person's interest. Let's start with prolonged eye contact. It's not just a quick glance. Imagine someone gazing into your eyes just a tad longer than usual during a conversation. It's like they're trying to have a chat with your soul. Now consider the power of a subtle smile. It's not just any smile, but one that seems to light up when you enter the room or during a conversation just with you. It's as if that smile is reserved only for you. And then there's the tilting of the head. This slight, almost imperceptible movement can indicate intense interest and attention. It's like the person's head and heart are saying, tell me more, I'm all ears. These gestures might be small, but their implications in the flirting game are huge. Is she just being nice, or is there more to that smile? In the delicate dance of human interaction, distinguishing between friendliness and micro-flirting is crucial, but not always clear-cut. Let's start with friendliness. Imagine someone passing you a polite smile as they hand you a coffee or offering a general compliment like, that's a nice shirt. These actions are pleasant, yes, but they're also quite broad and non-specific, typical of everyday courteous interaction. Now let's turn the lens to micro-flirting. This involves more personalized gestures. For instance, if that smile comes with a playful wink or the compliment is more specific, like that color really brings out your eyes, you're likely witnessing micro-flirting. These actions are intentional and tailored to create a spark, a personal connection that goes beyond mere politeness. Understanding these differences can save you from a world of awkward misunderstandings. They say the eyes are the window to the soul and perhaps to the heart. Welcome to the intriguing world of eye contact, a subtle yet powerful form of communication that might just be your first clue to micro-flirting. When someone holds your gaze just a tad longer than the casual glance, it's like they're whispering secrets without saying a word. This isn't your everyday eye contact, this is eye contact with a spark. Imagine you're chatting in a group and you notice that amidst the laughter and conversation, there's one pair of eyes that consistently seek yours. Every time you look up, Bam, there they are, gazing at you with an intensity that feels like a soft spotlight in a dim room. Now it's not just about the duration of the gaze, but also the quality. Is there a playful twinkle there? A gentle softening of the eyes, perhaps? These nuances are the silent messengers of interest and intrigue. If those glances are lingering, there might just be something more than casual interest. A touch can be worth a thousand words in the language of flirtation. Imagine, if you will, a light brush of the fingers under the guise of removing an imaginary speck of dust from a jacket, or perhaps a playful nudge during a lively conversation. These gestures might seem trivial, but in the intricate dance of micro-flirting, they're as telling as a wink or a smile. Take, for instance, the classic footsie under the table. It's not just a random act of toe-tapping gone rogue, it's a deliberate yet subtle invasion of personal space that says, hey, I'm here and I'm interested. Then there's the lingering hand touch that lasts just a second longer than casual. It's these small acts that can send pulses racing and cheeks blushing. But remember, context is key. Not every touch is a flirtatious one. Ever noticed how close someone gets when they're particularly interested? It's not just about being within earshot. Proximity plays a pivotal role in micro-flirting, where the invasion of personal space can signal more than casual interest. 
Imagine you're at a cozy cafe and there's ample seating available, yet someone chooses the seat right next to you. It's not just for the great view or the extra leg room, it's a subtle cue. They're closing the distance, making every laugh a bit louder and every glance a tad more significant. Or picture a group setting where amidst the buzz and banter, one person consistently positions themselves to be near you. Or perhaps they find reasons to move closer under the guise of checking out your phone screen or sharing a view of your book. These maneuvers aren't always coincidental. It's about creating an intimate sphere where subtle exchanges gain momentum. And as these distances shrink, the connection possibilities expand. Personal space invasion might just be the first territory conquered in the land of flirtation. Imitation is not just a form of flattery, it might be a form of flirting. Now let's talk about mirroring, a subtle yet telling indicator in the art of micro-flirting. Imagine you're at a cafe sipping on your coffee, and you notice that every time you lean in, so does she. Every smile you offer is quietly reciprocated with a similar curve of the lips. Mirroring goes beyond mere coincidence. It's a subconscious act where one person copies the posture, movements, or mannerisms of another. This mimicry can often mean that the person is not just comfortable with you, but is also potentially interested. It's their body's way of saying, hey, I'm in tune with you. So next time you're chatting with someone and find them echoing your actions, whether it's a tilt of the head, crossing of legs, or a shared laugh, take a moment to consider. This isn't just synchronized behavior, it's a dance of subtle hints and gestures. If you spot mirroring, chances are high that the flirting game is on. Is that tease a mere jest? Or is it jest with a twist of flirt? Ah, the art of teasing. It's like a dance where the steps aren't always clear. Let's try to decode this subtle form of communication. When someone tosses a playful comment your way, it might just be friendly banter. This type of teasing is usually broad, not aimed specifically at anyone, and often happens in group settings. Think of it as the conversational equivalent of throwing a frisbee in a park. It's all fun and games meant for everyone to enjoy. However, when the teasing becomes more personalized, it might just be a hint of micro-flirting. This is where things get intriguing. If the jokes seem to highlight unique aspects of your personality or appearance, and it feels like they're tailored just for you, that's a subtle nudge into flirt territory. It's like being handed a secret note in class. It's meant for your eyes only. Teasing can be tricky, so tune in to the tone and context. Listen closely. The secrets of attraction might just be revealed in her tone. Imagine this, you're chatting with someone and notice that every time you crack a joke, there's a delightful lilt in her voice, a playful undertone that wasn't there before. You might just be on the receiving end of what we call micro-flirting. It's not just what she says, but how she says it. A sudden softening of the voice, a drop to a sultrier tone, or even an unexpected giggle can signal more than casual interest. Think about the last time you heard someone speak in a slow, measured way, their words almost caressing your ears. That's not accidental. It's intentional, aimed at creating an intimate ambience that pulls you in. And yes, a change in pitch can indeed be a powerful arrow in the quiver of flirtation, higher when excited, lower when trying to appear seductive. So the next time you're in conversation, pay attention to these vocal variations. Her words might say just friends, but her voice might be telling a different story. A flush of the cheeks might just be the flush of affection. When it comes to micro-flirting, the face is a canvas of subtle signs. Imagine this. You're chatting with someone and notice a gentle blush spreading across their cheeks. This isn't just a reaction to a warm room or a spicy dish. It's a classic signal of interest and embarrassment mingled together, often a response to your presence or something you've said. Now let's talk about the lips and often overlooked frontier in facial expressions. A slight biting or licking of the lips can indicate nervousness, but in the right context, it's a textbook case of micro-flirting. It's like saying, I'm a bit unsure, but yes, I'm interested. And what about a coy smile? That kind of smile that seems to linger just a tad longer than usual, paired with a gaze that might dart away as soon as your eyes meet. It's playful, it's intriguing, and yes, it's flirting. These involuntary reactions can be the most telling signs of all. A wink at the bar or a compliment at work, context changes everything. Imagine this, you're at a bustling coffee shop and the barista flashes a quick smile while handing over your latte. It's pleasant, likely just friendly service, nothing more. But switch that setting to a quiet bookstore corner, the same smile from a stranger while discussing your favorite novels, 
might hint at micro-flirting. The environment plays a crucial role in how we perceive these subtle cues. Let's wander into a corporate setting. A compliment about your presentation from a colleague at a conference could simply be professional admiration. However, if that compliment is whispered during a casual after-work gathering, it might just be a sprinkle of micro-flirting. At a lively party where laughter and close conversations are the norms, what seems like micro-flirting, those light touches or playful teases, might just be the social currency of the event devoid of any romantic undertones. Always consider the where and when before jumping to conclusions. In the digital age, flirtation goes virtual. Welcome to the intriguing world of digital micro-flirting, where emojis are the new winks and likes can mean more than just appreciation. When someone chooses to send you a wink or a heart emoji, it might be their playful way of dropping a hint. And don't overlook the timing and frequency of messages. Receiving texts at odd hours or with a rapid-fire response can often signal a deeper interest masked behind the guise of casual conversation. Consider the content of these digital exchanges. Does the conversation quickly move from general topics to more personal anecdotes and teasing remarks? This shift can be a subtle indicator of micro-flirting. Someone might casually mention that a song or a scene from a movie reminded them of you, weaving personal connections into digital dialogues. Remember, the digital realm adds layers of complexity to interpreting interactions. What might simply be a polite exchange in person can take on new dimensions online. Digital flirting might be subtle, but it's definitely significant. Caught a micro-flirt? Here's how to handle it with aplomb. So you've picked up on those subtle signs, and now you're certain it's not just friendly banter, but genuine micro-flirting. The ball's in your court, but how do you volley it back without causing a stir or stepping out of bounds? If you're interested and want to keep the game going, start with mirroring their body language subtly. It's like silently saying, I'm on the same wavelength. Gradually introduce your own micro-flirting cues. Perhaps a light touch on the arm during a laugh or an extended gaze that lingers just a moment longer than usual. Remember, the key is subtlety. It's micro-flirting, not a billboard advertisement. On the flip side, if you'd rather keep things platonic, it's all about setting boundaries without building walls. Keep your responses warm but neutral. Dial back on the body language cues and maintain a friendly but more formal distance. It's not about being cold, just clear. Whether you flirt back or friend zone, handling it gracefully is key. Now that we've decoded the subtle signs, the ball's in your court. We've journeyed through the landscape of micro-flirting, distinguishing it from mere friendliness. From the telling glances of eye contact to the whispers of proximity and personal space, each sign plays its part. Subtle touches, mirroring behavior, and even the tone of one's voice can reveal more than just casual interest. Understanding these cues can turn ambiguous interactions into clear signals. Use your new knowledge wisely and may your flirting game be as subtle as it is successful. Enjoyed unraveling the mysteries of micro-flirting with us? If so, tap that like button, hit subscribe, and don't be shy. Drop your thoughts or questions in the comments below. Until next time, Keep those eyes peeled and those cues ready. Savored this video, fancy another? Click the on-screen video for an even deeper dive into fresh territory. Your support is like a warm cuppa on a brisk day. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, ring that bell for the latest content. Cheers for watching.